In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to knit a blanket design that I am naming Hannah. This blanket design is a 20 row repeat, so it's a little bit longer than what I sometimes tackle in my blanket patterns, but it is still a nice and simple rhythmic repeat. With this design, you've got diagonal rows of texture sandwiched in between some garter stitch. I really like combining texture with garter stitch to break up the pattern repeats that you're knitting because in my mind, it just makes it feel like the project is growing quicker. To knit a blanket the same size as mine, which is 60 centimetres wide by about 80 centimetres long, you're going to need 400 grams of double knit yarn. But those of you outside the UK, the equivalent yarn is three weight yarn or light worsted weight yarn. And if you're looking for a meterage, then you're going to need between 900 and 1200 metres of yarn. You are also going to need some four millimetre circular needles and you want these needles to be at least 80 centimetres long so that they are long enough to accommodate all the stitches that you are going to cast on. Then you're going to need some tapestry needles, some embroidery scissors, and then optional but extremely useful is two stitch markers and we use these to mark these side borders so it just makes the transition from the side garter stitch edging to that middle textured panel so much easier to spot. I like to give you the pattern multiple for that middle textured panel separate to the stitches that we cast on for the border. That just gives you the freedom to change the size of the border or even change the type of stitches that you use for the border and then still have that clear defined pattern multiple that you need for the middle textured section of your blanket. The pattern multiple for this blanket for that middle panel is four plus two. So you want to cast on a number that is a multiple of four. So for instance, 16 stitches, and then you want to add two additional stitches after you've done that. The side borders that I use are a total of 18 stitches and that works out at nine stitches for either side border. So what you want to do first of all is to cast on your multiple of four, add those two stitches and then add an additional 18 stitches. For my blanket that I showed you in the beginning that is 60 centimetres wide, I cast on a total of 136 stitches and that does include the stitches for the side border. So that is the complete number of stitches that you would need to cast on if you want to replicate what I've done. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to cast on a very small sample today. I like to use the long tail cast on method, but if you have another cast on method that you prefer to use, then you can use that too. So if you're trying to replicate the blanket that I've made, you need to go ahead and cast on a total of 136 stitches. This blanket is knitted from bottom to top. So the first part that we need to knit is our bottom garter stitch edging. That consists of a total of 15 rows and it is all worked in exactly the same way. So I'm going to show you how to knit that very first row and then I'm going to leave you to carry on and knit the additional 14 rows that make up that bottom garter stitch border. It's a really nice and simple pattern. So what you want to do is you're going to knit every single stitch with the exception of the final stitch. So once you get to your final stitch, we work that final stitch slightly differently because it's our selvage stitch and working it in the way that I like to work my selvage stitches gives you a really lovely, neat braided effect along your long edges of your blanket. So what you want to do is knit your way across and then when you get to that final stitch, you're going to come back and I will show you how you work that final stitch to get that lovely, neat edge. Once you've knitted all the way across the row and you have this one stitch left, you want to work the following technique at the end of each row. So you are going to slip this final stitch purlwise with the yarn at the front. I'm a continental knitter, so I just lift my working yarn onto this right hand needle while I slip the stitch. But if you feel more comfortable lifting that yarn all the way to the front of your work, then that's fine too. Once you've moved your yarn to the front of your work in the method that you prefer, you want to pop your right hand needle into the stitch as if to purl. And what we mean by that is you want to go into the stitch from right to left. So as if you're going to do a purl stitch instead of going from left to right. So pop that right hand needle in and then slip that stitch firmly onto your right hand needle so it's nice and secure there and then take your left hand needle out. And if like me, you held your yarn with your right hand needle, you want to lift it to the front of your work to make sure that it's definitely at the front because if you leave it looped over and turn your work, you will accidentally create a new stitch. 
So that's row one of 15 done. If you now go ahead and complete rows two to 15 and then come back, we can tackle that middle textured panel together. And that's what forms the bulk of our blanket. Now that we've finished our bottom garter stitch border, it is time to move on to that middle textured panel. As I said in the introduction, that is a 20 row repeat and those 20 rows form the building blocks of our blanket. I'm going to walk you through all those rows one by one and make it nice and easy and break it down into simple steps for you. The first time we work row one, we're going to do a little bit of setup work to get our stitch markers in place to mark our side borders so that that middle textured panel is really nice and easy to see. Our odd numbered rows form the right side of our work. So every time that you work an odd numbered row, you will have the right side of your work facing you. And once you've worked a few rows, you will start to see the texture forming on those right side rows. So to start row one, you want to knit nine stitches. Once you've knit those nine stitches, you want to grab the first of your two stitch markers and just pop it onto your right hand needle. Next, you want to carry on and knit all of your stitches until you have nine stitches left on your left hand needle to work. When you get to that point, just like we did at the beginning of the row, you're going to grab your second stitch marker and pop it onto your right hand needle. And then you want to carry on and knit the next eight stitches. Just like with our garter stitch border, your final stitch is your selvage stitch and you're going to slip that stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row two, you want to start by knitting every stitch until you hit your first stitch marker. So that's a total of nine stitches. Slip that stitch marker over from your left needle to your right needle. And then you want to purl one stitch. Next, we're going to work a four stitch repeat all the way along our row until one stitch before this second stitch marker. And that four stitch repeat goes as follows. You are going to knit two stitches and then purl two stitches. And you want to repeat that combination of knit two and purl two all the way across until you have one stitch left to work before your second stitch marker. And that should come after you have worked a purl two. This final stitch before your second marker, you want to purl. Then slip your marker over and knit eight stitches. Slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front and that completes row two. All the odd numbered rows in this project are worked in exactly the same way. I will go over them for you, but if you are a more experienced knitter, you can just work all the odd numbered rows in the same way. So for row three, you are just going to knit all the way across. You want to make sure to slip your markers over from your left hand needle to your right hand needle. And then that final stitch of the row is our selvage stitch. So you don't want to knit that stitch. You want to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front like we have been doing for all of our previous rows. Row four, you want to knit until you hit that first marker. Slip the marker over from your left needle to your right needle and then you want to purl the next two stitches. Then you're going to work a four stitch repeat all the way across until you hit that second marker and that four stitch repeat is as follows. You are going to knit two and purl two all the way across until you hit your second marker and if you've counted your stitches correctly then you should hit that second marker after you've finished a purl two. Slip that second marker over when you get to it and then knit the next eight stitches. Finish off your row by slipping that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. For row five you are just going to knit your way across knitting everything except the final stitch. 
don't forget to slip those markers over as you come to them and then you're going to work the last stitch of the row by slipping it purlwise with the yarn in front. Start row six by knitting the nine stitches before your first stitch marker. Slip that first stitch marker over from your right needle to your left needle and then you want to knit the next stitch. Now we're going to jump into a four stitch repeat that you want to work all the way along until one stitch before this second stitch marker. And for this row, that four stitch repeat is as follows. You are going to purl two stitches and then knit two stitches all the way along until one stitch before that second marker. And if you've counted your stitches correctly, you should find that that comes after a knit two. This final stitch before the second marker, you want to purl. Slip the marker over and then knit eight stitches. Finish off your row by slipping that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row seven is another nice and straightforward one. You're going to knit every single stitch with the exception of that final stitch, which you want to slip purlwise with the yarn in front. Don't forget that you want to slip the stitch markers over as you hit them so that you don't accidentally drop them off your needles. And then every stitch is a knit stitch with the exception of that final stitch, which just as a reminder, you're going to slip purlwise with the yarn in front. Row eight, you want to knit the first nine stitches and that should take you to your first stitch marker. Slip the marker over and then you want to knit the next two stitches. Now you're going to jump into your four stitch repeat and for this row you're going to work that all the way until you hit your second marker. So you are going to purl two stitches and then knit two stitches and you repeat that purl two knit two combination all the way until you hit that second marker and if you've counted your stitches correctly you should hit that after a knit two so you should be able to finish your set of four stitches and then hit your stitch marker slip that second marker over when you get to it and carry on and knit the next eight stitches Finish off your row by slipping that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. For row nine, you are going to knit your way across, knitting every single stitch with the exception of the final stitch. You want to slip those stitch markers over from one needle to the other as you hit them. And then for that final stitch, don't forget that instead of knitting that stitch, you want to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front. Start row 10 by knitting the nine stitches that take you to your first stitch marker. Slip the marker over and then you want to purl the next stitch. Now you're going to work a four stitch repeat all the way across until one stitch before your second marker. And that four stitch repeat is as follows. You are going to knit two and then purl two, all the way across until one stitch before your second marker. And if you've counted your stitches correctly, that should come after you have worked a purl two. This final stitch before your second marker, you are going to knit, slip that second marker over and then carry on and knit the next eight stitches. And that should leave you with just one stitch left to work. That's our selvage stitch and you are going to slip that purlwise with your yarn in front. For row 11, you just want to knit your way all the way across like you have been doing for all the other odd numbered rows. You're going to slip your markers over as you come to them. And then for the final stitch of the row, you want to slip that purlwise with the yarn in front instead of knitting it. Row 12, you start by knitting those nine stitches before your first stitch marker. Slip your marker over 
and then you want to purl the next two stitches. Next we're going to jump into the four stitch repeat for this row and you're going to work these four stitches all the way across until you hit your second marker and the four stitch repeat for this row is knit two and then purl two and you want to repeat those all the way till you hit the second marker and if you've counted your stitches correctly you should hit that after a purl two. Slip your second marker over and then knit the next eight stitches. Finish off your row by slipping that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 13, you're going to knit your way across until that very last stitch. Slip your markers as you come to them and then for that very last stitch of the row, you're going to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front. But every other stitch of that row is just a knit stitch. Row 14 is the last of our textured rows before we move on to that little slice of garter stitch that separates the texture and you want to start row 14 by knitting the 9 stitches before your first stitch marker. Slip that stitch marker over and then you want to purl one stitch. Now you're going to work a four stitch repeat all the way across until one stitch before that second stitch marker and for this row that four stitch repeat is purl two and then knit two and you repeat that four stitch pattern until one stitch before your second stitch marker and if you have counted your stitches correctly that should come after a knit two. This final stitch here before the second marker, you want to purl. Slip that second marker over and then knit the next eight stitches. And then finish the row by slipping that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Rows 15 through to 20 of our repeat Add that little slice of garter stitch that separates these sections of the diagonal texture. So it's six rows worked in exactly the same way. You want to knit every single stitch with the exception of that final stitch. You're going to slip your stitch markers over as you come to them. And then that final stitch of the row, you're going to slip purlwise with the yarn in front. So you are going to repeat that process for the next six rows. So that is rows 15 all the way through to 20. And then I will meet you to discuss how you build the rest of your blanket. So this is what a full 20 row repeat looks like. I've just finished row 20 and I would now go back to row one and work that 20 row repeat again as many times as I needed until my blanket is about seven centimeters shorter than I want the overall length to be. If you want to replicate the blanket that I showed you in the introduction, then I repeated the 20 row repeat a total of 12 times. So you would now go away and repeat these 20 rows 11 more times. You can count how many repeats you've done by counting your garter stitch stripes because they mark the end of a 20 row repeat. So every time you have this section of garter stitch, you know that that's the end of your 20 row repeat. Once you've worked those 20 rows as many times as you want, you will then need to work rows 1 to 14 once more. So you will stop at the end of row 14 and at that point you would move on to your top garter stitch border. What I will do, is I will go away now and work rows 1 to 14 once more and then I'll come back and show you how we tackle that top garter stitch border. Your blanket is obviously going to be a lot bigger than mine with a lot more repeats, but this gives you the general idea as to what this final part of your blanket should look like before you start your top garter stitch edging. So you will have worked your repeats and then you will have worked rows 1 to 14 once more and your first row of your edging should be a right side row so you should have the right side of your work facing you 
and to work the edging we're going to work in exactly the same way as we did our bottom edging except on this section we are going to work 16 rows instead of the 15 that we worked at this end so i'll recap the way we work the border just in case you can't remember from the beginning of the project so we're going to work 16 rows in exactly the same way you're going to knit every single stitch all the way along what you can do when you knit your first row is you can get rid of your stitch markers because we don't need to mark the side borders anymore and you want to knit your way across until you have just one stitch left to work that's our selvage stitch and i will recap how we work that selvage stitch just in case you've forgotten how to do it hopefully by now you should be really familiar with how we work this final stitch of every row but just in case you need a refresher you're going to slip it purl wise with the yarn in front so the first step is to pop your working yarn to the front of your work in the way you prefer I like to hold it with my needle but you can lift it to the front of the work if that's how you prefer to do it then you're going to get this right hand needle and pop it into the stitch from right through to left so as if to purl what you don't want to do is grab it from left to right you're going to slide it all the way onto this right hand needle and then when it's firmly on that needle and you've not got any risk of dropping it you're going to take the left hand needle out and then if you've held the yarn with your right hand needle like I have you just need to make sure that you lift it all the way to the front of your work so you don't accidentally create an extra stitch. So that's row one of 16 completed and you now need to go away and knit an additional 15 rows and then if you come back I will show you how we cast off and get this blanket off our needles and into a finished object. After your 16th row your border should look a little bit like this. You should have eight garter ridges on the front of your work and you should be just about to start a right side row. For my blankets I like to stick with a really nice simple knitted cast off. I'm going to cover the first few stitches in this video but if you need a more in-depth beginner friendly video then I have one of those already on my channel and I will link it up here now. You want to start your cast off row by knitting the first two stitches. Try not to knit these too tight because otherwise your cast off edge will pull in and your blanket won't lay flat. Once you've knitted those two stitches, you're going to get your left hand needle and pop it into the first of the two stitches that you knitted from left through to right. Lift it up and over the second stitch you knitted and off that right hand needle so that you go from two stitches down to one. Then the next step is to knit one more stitch so that you go back up to two stitches on this right hand needle and then you're going to repeat that same process and lift the first stitch that you knitted over the second stitch and off your right hand needle and go back down to one stitch and that is the process that you repeat all the way along your row so you're going to knit one and lift one all the way until you have no stitches left on your left hand needle and you just have one stitch left on your right hand needle and that is the next part that I will meet you at. Once you're left with just this one stitch left on your right hand needle you can break your yarn and you want to leave a tail that is long enough for you to securely sew your end in. I like to say about 20 centimeters but leaving a little bit extra is always a good idea because having too much is better than not having enough. Then with this final stitch what I do is I pull upwards to make it slightly bigger and at that point we can get rid of our needles, we don't need them anymore. And then I put my finger and thumb through that loop, grab the tail and pull the tail all the way through. And then I pull to tighten. And what that does is give you a nice secure point to start working and sewing in your end and once it's sewn in you can't even see that that extra loop is there. A couple of bits and bobs to cover just before I go. This blanket is not reversible, so this is the right side of the work. And then if I flip it over, you can see that the wrong side of the work just has no defined pattern because of the stockinette stitch that we're working on the front. So it does have a very definite right and wrong side. 
You can knit this in any weight yarn that you like. You will just need to adjust the amount of stitches that you cast on and the amount of repeats that you work to accommodate the thickness of yarn that you've chosen. Also make sure that when you do choose a different yarn to the one that I've worked with, that you are using the right thickness knitting needles. So you can check the back of the ball band and I would always recommend that you use the recommended needle size that your particular yarn suggests. I have left all of the details about this blanket, the colour yarn that I used and a written copy of the pattern repeat and all of the instructions on my blog. That is linked down below and there's also a link there to an ad free PDF if you would like to have something that you can print out and take away with you so that you're not sat in front of a screen while you're knitting. That's all from me for today. I'll leave you with another one of my blankets and I will see you again for another video soon.